Hi, guys. Welcome back to Into the Light, a different life story. My show on YouTube and as a podcast with me, your host, Stefan Neff. I have got another beautiful guest with me, and I'm so looking forward to talk to Karina Pacific today. She is a fellow author, the author of Choosing Magic, and it's um, a delight for me to discuss that. Uh, but before you get to listen to my wonderful guest, press down there, press the subscribe button, because ultimately, guys, you, you know, you, I've got so many beautiful interviews coming out and you lose track. So at least you get a notification every time I get another wonderful guest uh, showing up on my show. So Karina, I'm so grateful to have you on my show. Welcome. Hi, how are you? So excited. <laughs> So excited. We made it. We made it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the back story there, guys, is that we tried a few times to to, to link up. But the, the gremlins of different time zones were very effective in preventing us from actually being in the same place at the same time. So it is oh what it gosh. is. But that, that is life. Karina, that is life. life. That exactly. is life. And we were able to just get it done and redo, redo. We we have a chance to redo everything, right? And is that not the lesson to learn from from our lives? So guys, you've heard it. That's it. We have got a chance to redo. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're done. Okay. We're That's done. We're done. <laughs> Test. <laughs> no. I mean, the reality is I want to know a little bit more about you. First okay. of all. Um, you are a very successful real estate uh, agent in uh, your Los La La Angeles. Land. In La La Land, in La Los La Angeles. La <laughs> <laughs> most yes. people, most people around the world would consider La La Land somewhere else, <laughs> but La La Land for you means Los Angeles Los and Angeles. The, the surrounding the surrounding suburbs. Yes. Um, so that is obviously your daytime job, but then at some stage you thought, you know what? you know what, I might as well write a book. Mm. <laughs> now, most of us don't just write a book because we can, because we have a message that we feel that needs to come out. So I want to know what, when was the moment that you decided it's time to write this book? Well, I think it started um, in various stages of my life, but it, it, it or sort of the bud started when I was uh, in Mexico. I was raised in Mexico, and about somewhere between seven to nine years old, um, because of my story, I, I had this epiphany. Even at that little, like there's there's something very strange about my existence here in this world. It doesn't seem right. I don't have a father. My mother's gone. She's not your traditional mother. Um, not very nurturing. She's just kind of absent that way. Uh, my family's not very supportive. I, I kind of nobody really talked to me for twelve years of my life in Mexico. Nobody had exchange conversations. I was sexually abused. Like it just seemed off, you know, in that little intuition that we all have. And from there, things kept on happening. And it was about. Um, I don't know, my early 20s, I really have to write this down. I, I feel like there's something off. And then I came up to different books where I was learning from others. Mm -hmm. I was, and that's a lot of how I healed and changed my story by learning, by learning from other people's stories, other memoirs, other biographies, mm -hmm. because we all, all of us have a story, right? And we can choose to uh, find the good and change it. We can choose the magic in, in, in life or we can repeat the patterns and uh, repeat the cycles. And I didn't want to do that. I, I always had a, a way of seeing the good and stuff. So I continued to have this little yearning to, to write it down, particularly the more that I learned about others, which helped me rise. Then I thought, well, I should write mine, but I didn't know how to. I was not a writer. So I didn't know how to in um, about, I don't know, 10 years ago, a dear friend of mine, very blunt, this gorgeous Jersey blonde girl, friend of mine, you know, they're very blunt in the East Coast. <laughs> she said, just stop, get over yourself, write it down, write it down, just <laughs> write it in stages, Mexico, crossing the border, you know, where you were like, and then it was, that was so simple to me. And from that point it started, 
and I wrote it in sections and it was a hot mess of a copy. I wasn't, I was, I mean, it was just, I'm not a writer, <laughs> but I, I had that, that need to do it. And then somebody gave me a little instruction that was very simple. And then once I had, uh, you know, the first copy of the transcript, I realized this is horrible. This is a hot mess of a, like just a story. <laughs> Where do I go next? <laughs> You just and described my it. first book. Yeah, yeah, it's just, <laughs> oh God, painful. Oh my God, oh my yeah. God, this is gonna, nobody's gonna read that. Yeah. I can't even read it myself, it was that. It was just venting. What, I, what that first copy was, was me venting and just letting all the stuff out that I always felt like this was off. My childhood was off, this doesn't seem right. This doesn't seem how a child should be raised and and born and all that stuff so um after that i just i i um lean uh asked a couple of clients of mine who, who wrote books and they did it professionally mm. and they directed towards uh, me towards the right person to help me she was a complete angel she was the perfect person to do this with me um and we wrote it together and it was it was uh it was i mean i wrote it but she was sort of my uh uh you know, mentor towards the process. So was that your I publisher was, or was that a mentor that helped you and then you approached a publisher? Say that again? Was that your publisher? This, no, it was no. not. She was just a writing uh, coach, writing hmm. mentor. She's a poet herself, uh, Stella oh. Suli, who's wonderful and very loving and kind. Hmm. And she, throughout the process, she just she she read my my messy transcript and she just said I I hear the voice. She said she knew there was a story, and from the voice she wanted we wanted to keep that story there in my voice because it's a very it's painful but it's funny, it's blunt, it's honest, and she got it and it was a perfect match. Yeah. Beautiful. I guess Beautiful. I think, yeah. Oh. So that was how long ago? Ten years ago. That you had this first the book. Yeah. So I mean, I started kind of writing ten years ago, but I finally finished it in late or fall of uh, two thousand eighteen. Yeah, yeah. And isn't it interesting because it takes such a long time? You would think, come yeah. on, you can just write down these memories and that's it, Bob's your uncle. But I mean, yeah. there is that's not just it, is it? I mean, how much no. how much healing was there involved? How much how much dealing with demons of your past was there. Right, right. And I, do you know, that's a good thing to say. I didn't have that because I'm, I'm actually quite obnoxiously positive. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's, I don't know why I, I would show, I mean, there's a lot of pain. There's a lot of pain in being fatherless. There's a lot of pain in not really being mothered. There's a lot of pain in not being supported. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes I think about it, God, oh my goodness, like how did this turn out like this? I'm somewhat of a decent human being after not being supported, loved. We all human beings, what do we want? We want to be supported, loved, encouraged, elevated. We want to be secured. We want to be touched. There was none of that. And so how did that turn out? I don't know. You know, it just by the grace of God, but um, I was able to do it. And going to it was very healing because it's just acknowledging. It's just acknowledging. And like we said initially, you know, we're human. We're not perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, and while it's painful, we there's a ton of good out there. There's a ton of goodness, a ton of magical moments, a lot of great still humanity. And it was, I call in the book, a lot of... Um, a lot of angels and heroes that came along my life that gave me hope and humanity that gave me hope. Oh, the people are good. Men are good. Even though I was sexually abused and abandoned and you know, what else stuff, men are good. There are a lot of great men. There are a lot of great women out there. There's a lot of great community. And if we lean into the positive and we lean, you just kind of go there, be more attracted to it. Then you're going to get more of that. 
that's the law of attraction that sounds so corny and such a cliche, yet it is so powerful and holds so much true for those of us mm. who actually either actively and consciously or subconsciously done that. When yeah. you're coming out of drugs and alcohol, you are taught not to socialize with those people that in the past was were, were around you because inevitably they you had them around because they were equally users druggies alcoholics etc so it is hard so you're losing a hell of a lot of your so-called friends in recovery but equally it is the same thing when you come through a hard time in your life you certainly do appreciate your life in a different way you value mm. yourself in a different way. And therefore, you might actually decide that certain toxic people do no longer have a role to play in your life. Right, right. Was, was that something that you experienced in through the, the course of writing your book, that relationships changed? They certainly did. I mean, obviously, in different spaces, actually, I've, I've had maybe for sure two phases of my life where toxic people left and for two or three, but um, I'm going through one right now where maybe it's because I'm gonna, gonna hit 50 years old soon and you're gonna go through the life where like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm up here at almost 50. If I, if I hit another 50, I'm really lucky. So I better like really take count of my circle and <laughs> because I really want to, you know, we have a lot to do in this community, in this life. So mm. a lot of people have dropped like flies. Mm. I just, they're gone because I, I just, people make friends with their story mm. Mm. in a negative way mm. and I, you can't help them. You want to love them and you got to move on. Mm. So, uh, especially with women, I want women to feel you know, the, how beautiful they are, how worthy they are. Mm. And some people just don't feel it. And sometimes you got to step aside mm. and let them go through their process. Mm. I'll be here when you're ready. So I, I, without getting up subject, yes, I've, I've got, I've had a few faces where, where you do kind of wean off certain mm. people in your life, mm. being, having been fatherless and mm. sexually abused and mothers, I, I was a traditional promiscuous individual at the beginning looking for love in all the wrong places. Mm. So that brings a lot of toxic people, a lot of toxic relationships, a lot of toxic um, acquaintances and environments. Mm. So when I got tired of that and I have sort of my big moment, probably in my mid twenties, I literally dropped on the ground and uh, this, there's this lake I used to run all the time um, by the way, exercise has helped me a lot. Always mm. moving. That I dropped in the ground. I'm tired. I'm really tired. Like I went from three toxic relationships, uh, a, a cheater who was a, also a professional liar, an alcoholic who was a, an amazing. Chill, he chewed tobacco, and when he chewed tobacco, he just got worse. It was a different level of high, uh, which was really interesting. And then uh, mm -hmm. another cheater and liar, and, uh, uh, and he was also addicted to like workout stuff. You know those things you pump. You know you mm -hmm. get sort of big. So mm -hmm. there were. I got tired of those things, and I just dropped it. And I realized I need to clean house. I need to peel the onion. There's something wrong here. So that was one of the first stages where I realized people that I need to take inventory of what's going on, take inventory of that story of when I was seven to nine years old, that there was something off. I need to pay attention to this and do some work. And then now I'm doing it 25 years later. Isn't that interesting? It just shows that we are on a path. It just shows yeah. that that your onion keeps growing and you peel one one layer back and you think, ah, yeah. see, all the pus is gone, all the yeah. all the, the, the yeah. black stuff is gone. And then you wait a little bit and something goes rather fishy and you think, yeah, 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 yeah. I need to do yeah. a bit more work here. And that is what I find in this show. There are there are guests who are coming on and i think yeah i've dealt with that topic in my own life yeah it's just see yeah. something for my for my viewers and suddenly i'm sitting there and think huh 
okay, because he or she has just put it in, in a little bit of a different framework or different words, and suddenly it reaches a place in me that had not been reached before. And suddenly yeah. memories keep flooding back where I think, damn, you never realized that this was a problem in the past. And this is good. This is good. It's amazing. It's it's gorgeous, isn't it? Because you yes, are yeah. you are you are growing. You're constantly growing. We have uh, to be consistently evolving. Yeah. You, we gotta continue to evolve. It's not scary. And and accept to be to be surprised because where you think you need to go and where your mind actually says, no, we are going now. Um, might be actually two different places. <laughs> you might yeah, not necessarily yeah. be be ready and right for a certain uh, certain topic to come up. But guess what? Um, whoever whoever brings those things into our lives, they uh, they are here. <laughs> you might as well have they're to learn. For, they're here for a reason. Mm. The, uh, we we have people that come through. What is that saying? Some people come for a reason. Some for a season. Mm. I'm probably uh, saying that wrong. Butcher. Uh, it sounds really, really good, <laughs> uh, and I know, I know your, 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 uh, what you mean. For me, it was. I will never forget when I was in recovery, uh, about two weeks in on a weekend. Suddenly, one of the nurses came and said, "Hey, look, um, you." Sorry, when I was in rehab, not in recovery. When I was in rehab, she said, "You've got a visitor," and I said, "What?" Yeah, my family is not coming. No, no, no. And it turned out it was one of my anesthetic technicians. So in, in my in my workplace, we work closely together. There's an anesthetic technician and the anesthetist, and together we look after the patient. And so this anesthetic tech came to visit me. So he drove three hours from Rotorua to Auckland and to see me for 20 minutes or 30 minutes and then drove back. And I would have never, never believed that, never would have expected that whatsoever so this man actually came to me and and said look i know exactly where you have been i when i was a drunk 15 years ago i nearly killed a man and that is what it took for me to mm. get sober and so here he was showing me his side that he had never showed me in 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 other settings but he was there for me at a time when i felt worthless and helpless and low and at my lowest and he came to me and he was a man who I sometimes took the mick out of because he was staunchly religious and I'm not. Mm. So it was this mm. kind of, oh yeah, religious nut job. But here he came and I suddenly saw him in a different light. And that experience changed everything for me. That opened the door for me to evaluate my all my relationships with the people around me. And suddenly I Good. saw what he had to give you he, he yeah. what he had to give you was would you think you would have seen him the same way if you weren't in recovery no 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 yeah, no yeah. it is it is you have to be uh, ready to yeah. to have the blinkers removed you have to yes. be ready to see it and it is you can lead a horse to, to water but you can't make make it drink and that's 100% that's, and that was the problem with me for a long time i was i was really fucked up in the head and it's just lived my own life and it was a dark life and now the last yeah. seven years are so different but our yeah. the, your experiences with you going through a lot of ups and downs in your life and having to sort of create your own life um with a lack of a moral compass with a lack of guidance that is not foreign to me uh, unfortunately, right. my moral compass I created was not necessarily the nicest moral compass. Um, so I was more focused on on alcohol, on yeah. on women, um, but not necessarily in a in a productive way, uh, in a nice way. Yeah. So, uh, what was your journey there? I mean, you you had this void. You wanted to fill this void as a young woman, and you said you were rebellious. Did drugs and alcohol play a role for you? Well, I certainly. Uh, well, speaking about the moral compass, I, I find that a, a topic very interesting because, um, well, for me, I don't know if it was a moral compass. I, I was in Mexico. I think this is, I think, what saved my life um, is, is having something bigger to believe in. Oh. And for growing up in Mexico, 
your fat of Catholicism like it's rice and beans. Mm. I mean, it's just part of your plate. It's part of your life. Mm. And when my mother worked a lot, I was sort of, I was pawned around from place to place to place. I was never consistent. So that's, you know, where a child would get probably sexually abused. You're kind of just throwing so she could work just different places. And so um, one of them would be, um, I went to for a short time or a good amount of time to Catholic school. And, but the nun would pick me up, the most angelic nun, very loving. And then I would spend time after school in the church with the priest and the nun. And I would be sort of be that child there, just ponder around there. And I, what I learned from there was order, instructor, and I didn't have any, I didn't have any of that stuff. It gave me, um, they gave me a lot of, med- uh, the, I learned about meditation there because it's so quiet. So it's be okay in your own silence in your own company. So, um, and I learned that, uh, that they are there. Well, you know, I have this complex thought between the church because they obviously have pulled some shenanigans and they should, (laughs) there needs to be a lot of evolution there. And, but they also kind of saved this little girl that was lost in the midst of her life with good loving humanity, which is so interesting, right? And it was that belief that they gave me of something higher than me that uh, that somebody was protecting me. Um, and there was something higher than self. I don't know that I would call it, you can call it more compass, whatever. It gave me a protection, this little umbrella that I'm not alone. And throughout, I've always carried and I, and I've put myself in very bad positions where I, I believe if, they, if that wasn't there, I would not be here today. So it's, I, I don't know, but it's, it, everybody has their thing. So with that, after through those trials of being in bad relationship, toxic, yes, there was a lot of drinking, like heavy drinking, a lot of partying. I never did drugs. I just didn't understand putting a white powder up my nose that I don't know where it comes from. <laughs> just, where does this come from? Yeah. And who made it? <laughs> Which is surprising in Mexico, come on, for crying out loud. Yes. It is, you know, yeah. you, you must have that, you know, I'll take a bit of uh, black beans, a bit of cocaine, and a little bit of yeah. Uh, that. Yeah, that must be your shopping list. Um, I mean, it's not, it's not good, mm. you know, so, but there was definitely a lot of that is just excessive in, in other levels. Mm. And after, I, like I said, when I, in my mid twenties, when I had that, that just dropped to the ground crying, I need help. I need help. Um, it, I, all the right things started falling through. I started, I did some, a lot of work, mm. uh, but I think there's that saying, like we all have to kind of hit rock bottom. Mm. right to kind of in whatever way it shows to you for you how did it show to you where you realized this is it no there's so many times that i realized that but i didn't have i didn't feel the power to do something about it i know i was i was getting darker and darker and darker and the only thing i knew to do was to drink i didn't know how to address unsolved grief I didn't know how to address the feelings of being worthless and, and helpless. I had, right. I had no ability to see the depression in me. I had no recognition, recognition uh, that mm-hmm. I actually suffer from PTSD. I could see it as easy, as, as, as plain as day in anyone else around me. Mm. I, was, I was very good as a doctor picking these kind of things up. God, but when it came to looking into me, I was blind, right. utterly blind. And then even when at those few moments when I saw how bad things were, I then didn't, I was too ashamed and too guilt-ridden to actually think that there could be help out there for me. And so mm. it was this combination that stopped mm. so many people from seeking help that the, the the alcohol is a big fat liar. Drugs are a big fat liar. 
PTSD, depression, anxiety, these are all bitches that, that tell you things that are not true, but you believe right. them as a human being. And that makes it so hard. It made it hard for me. And, and, and I guess that's why I'm on this mission to, to speak about these taboos which are still in our society. There's this kind of bullshit of, of depression, of, of PTSD. The, it is, the, the weird thing is, for me, it took me a long time to realize some of these things. Only about two, week, uh, two years ago did I realize that for the better part of my life, I suffered from PTSD. And, hmm. um, and suddenly, it only when that recognition came to light in me, was I able to seek the help? And by simply talking about things and then having some, some hypnosis uh, sorted me out. Suddenly these intruding thoughts, these, these, all these naughty things that are oh, bad things, the hypervigilance, all that was suddenly kept at bay at a manageable level. So- You probably felt that, lighter. Oh, hell yes, that is now. But so a lot of work, a lot, a lot of work has gone into me. But mm -hmm. I mean, the same is, is here happening with you. Here you were rock bottom running around the lake and suddenly you realize you can't run away from it any longer. Right. And because that was your running, probably. Right, that it was, was my running. <laughs> well, it's an interesting, I find that with like, um, as you were saying that, that, that what came, the word that came to my mind was shame. Uh, shame in the hiding the alcohol or whatever comes from it, not feeling worthy, the in in uh, being sexually abused, and what a lot of people that have you know sadly been through that trauma, there's shame involved in that, and the secrecy, um, which is really interesting, uh, because then it's uh, sort of this vicious cycle of secrecy, shame, feeling unworthy. And um, for some reason, I got to tell you, Stefan, like I, I, I always felt worthy. Like I felt like I needed to, this doesn't seem right. I need to get out of this. This doesn't seem right. Like, like this little thing, I don't know what it was, call it from the divine or, mm -hmm. but I, and I think that to this day, I, that just rises and maybe that's why I'm I'm like, no, look at the positive, look at the good, look at this. And it's so obnoxious to people. I've lost friends because I'm too like positive. I'm too like glass half full. People, because people like to make friends with their stuff. And I don't, I use that stuff for fuel, mm. right? But while well, not being oblivious that that happened, mm. I'm not stupid. I mean, you know, this, it happened and we mm. must recognize mm. it. But we can't do, I, I don't believe it. I, it doesn't work for me to dwell on it mm. and kind of spin it over. I mm. Just use it sort of help somebody else, maybe. You're, you're, there's a nice saying, my scars helped me to be the man I am today. They don't define me. And yes. So yes. the trauma doesn't define you. Yes, you have gone through a shit of, a, of, a, of an upbringing. But mm. here you are today being a, a, a woman who is dealing with these emotions and is therefore so much better armed to now show the people around her, look, this is where I came through. This is yeah. where I felt really low and take, take that to heart because I was able to get through in this and this way. And that is right. what your book is about. This is what your story is about. This is why you are here sitting on this show with me, because you want to give people hope. You want to show them that regardless what your upbringing is, regardless how bad you think your, your cards were that you have been dealt with at birth. No, it is. Look at me today. You can change your story. You Correct. can change your story. I, I changed my story. You can change your story. Uh. We all have a story. Huh. Find the good in yours and add Indeed. to it. Exactly. Yeah. And it, that, it but is. At changing the story that could have a meaning of somehow hiding it or somehow painting over it. Guys, that doesn't work. 
however thick lack a layer of lacquer you put on on shit, yeah. it will not stop smelling. Okay, it is yeah. still. It stink. It'll it, stink. <laughs> and I think, and therefore, you you need to deal with it. It's time yes. to clean up the garden. Okay, your dog has done a big poo in there. Yeah. Time to put the poo out. And for that, you need to take action. For that, you need if to. I, but you know what sneaks in? Don't you think it's shame that sneaks oh, in there please. and it keeps us from taking the action? Don't Absolutely. you think? Absolutely. Yeah. So how did you overcome that? So the shame was the shame. there in you. Yes. Whilst you called you, yourself obnoxiously positive, there will have been moments when you did not dare to look in the mirror because you felt so low and worthless. What did yeah. You... There. What did I do? Hmm. Oh gosh, I. I just kept at it. I was just, I've been sort of fending for myself for so long. You have to, I had to go. I was never into uh, alcohol that much that I would kind of hit bottom and get sort of snockered mm. out of my mind over and over to escape. Mm. Um, uh, I worked, ex movie. so when I was in Mexico, one of my uncles, who's a wonderful guy, taught me just the power of moving exercising he was a runner so he would take me to the beach a lot which i found a lot of solace in the beach and he would run and he would make me run and i was very angry about it because i was 10 years old i'm not supposed to be running i was supposed to be having fun <laughs> beautiful <laughs> but years later i realized that that gave me a lot of healing um moving i mean obviously we know moving is so important find your workout find your movement because or even if you're pissed off you're not feeling right go take a walk a simple walk go find a small little hill pump up the music whatever it is do jumping jacks just get the blood flowing it changes things it changes the mind it really changes your i mean you know that you're a doctor right so that was another sort of tool that was given to me that I used. So I don't, yeah. It's so, no, it's so beautiful what you're saying. It's so true. And you don't need to, sometimes there are no times to go for a run, et cetera, but you can go to the bathroom and actually look into the mirror and say, okay, today's a shit day, but then do yeah. a power oh, yeah. move, do a power yeah. move, do this kind of, yeah. okay, I'll yes. do that. I'll do that. Just this kind of, this kind of, for me, oh, being yes. masculine, I, I say, okay, yeah, come on. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah. Um, and suddenly something changes. Something, something changes. changes. Exactly. Well, I do that. And I have had that for sure in my uh, very bad days when I, I used to have, when I was, you know, partying a lot, dancing in the night and eating late and drinking and stuff like that. My, my skin was completely like acne filled. And that was shameful because it was, I didn't look that uh, great. Uh, and I would look in the mirror and like, this is terrible. Uh, and this was just, I was internally toxic. And it was, it was perching out of my skin. I looked like this pizza face. <laughs> I had smelly feet. When I was drinking, that, my feet smelled and reeked to high heaven. Oh, that's interesting. And the moment I stopped drinking, no more smelly feet. Okay. Your it's, body it, it, tries to get it out. I know. It's amazing. That wasn't isn't it? interesting. Exactly. How do you but, know it? How do you know they stunk? You could smell them yourself. I could smell them myself. <laughs> hell, hell yes. <laughs> and yes, I'm a tall guy, so there's quite a bit of distance between there and there. <laughs> so hell. So no, it is, <laughs> and it's just, it is, yeah. <laughs> See, that's I, so interesting. <laughs> I love yeah. it that you can laugh at it, but you have to laugh at yourself. <laughs> but it just oh shows it just shows us how toxic we can be ourselves. And yes. that by taking action, by changing small yeah. little things, you can suddenly turn your life around. And by even changing then maybe bigger challenges such as the addiction, etc. Suddenly sure. your life changes. And it How does. amazing is that? This kind of it, energy. It is right now, Karina, you're you're this morning. I've got a beautiful recording session here. You're the third interview. I had the third guest. And I feel as refreshed and as cool and as so and as bouncy as I was when I got up. 
outside is beautiful. That you please don't tell me that we felt like that when we were in the midst of our depression or in the midst yeah. of a hangover or in, you know all these kind of negative kind of uh, the negative spiral that sort of I call I call it spinning like. I was just talking to my husband this morning, stop spinning, like no more spinning. I, I have a friend of mine that like just, she creates scenarios. I'm like, those scenarios are probably not going to happen. Stop spinning. Just let it be. It's, <laughs> just let it go. Exactly. But, yeah. but these are skills that we need to learn. And you have you awesome. have learned them. And that's that's the powerful thing that you read memoirs of others who got their life together and you then basically went uh, and, and took pieces from here and there and got yourself sorted. Were there, were there times when you actually thought, her, I would like to get in touch with someone who knows a little bit more about that? Did you have uh, life coaches? Did you have uh, mentors? Did you have uh, a psychologist? Did you have people so who studied that stuff and helped you? that stuff as far as just some of the stages of my life or therapy mm -hmm. I definitely I had a therapist mm -hmm. I I happened to around when I kind of hit bottom I happened to I picked up hiking at that time mm -hmm. and I went hiking and I went down to Burbank the good old Burbank California where the studios are and mm -hmm. I used to live there and there was a bookstore and I went to the bookstore. I'm like, oh, what am I going to do this week? And I went to the bookstore. And I'm, I wasn't a reader. I wasn't a writer. I wasn't a reader. Like nobody read to me. Nobody like, it's just, and they went and they happened to be that self-improvement era. That was somewhere in the nineties. Remember mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like uh, Wayne Dyer and all those people. Mm -hmm. And there was a woman book in there and, um, in, uh, and there was a bunch of books in there. And that really helped me. It, it was all kinds of that era book, even sort of the women movement, Gloria Steinem, Naomi mm, Wolf, mm. and all that stuff. And that was very empowering for me. Nice. Uh, just to read about the power of women. Uh, also just read about the mind, mm. how you know it works and, and just healing. And then my therapist. And believe it or not, it was a lot of just regular humans that I think it's just God just poured good humanness my way um, with good deeds, encouraged me to do better, to rise. Oh, you shouldn't, you know, be a waitress too long. You have, you can do better. Always people encouraging me. And that's what I call the heroes uh, and angels on the earth that help me be better. Mm. And I, you do that. You by doing this or doing that. Mm. I do it. We have a responsibility to give to our humankind. We never know who we are influencing positively, who we are changing their day, so true. Uh, possibly their life by a simple gesture of like, you're awesome. That was a great job, whatever it is. Or, That's you know. Not. Exactly. Yeah. And there, were, there was a lot of that. So I can't give just my therapist credit. Like mm. there's mm. a ton of people. Um, and that's beautiful. But you've you've surrounded yourself with them once you actually got they the came feeling. along. They yeah. came along. And then now I'm making a very purposeful um, mm. change to have people like that. And then you see those people moving away and more goodness. Like now, like two years ago, I just said to my psychotherapist just wonderful vivacious girl i said i just want more good kind i want a community i want confident women and men good i want to do the, to the community and that's what i've been getting i think when we get really purposeful do things happen right Beautiful. and i'm not used to that so yeah yeah <laughs> you're not used to that do you think i'm you're not used to naming it Ah, I see. Uh, do you, I'm worth it. I feel like worth it. I just haven't named it. Good. That was exactly the question that I wanted to yeah. ask because some of us have got this underlying belief system that that we work hard, work hard on something. Might it be a better relationship? Might it be more money? Might it be a better body? And then immediately this subconscious, even lower than subconscious belief system comes in who are you? You're not worth it. This is, this is, and you get this kind of weird things, weird voices coming in and you start procrastinating. Yeah. 
and you start self-sabotaging and then very quickly you're back to square one. And that is right. such a bizarre thing. Yet it, in so many lives I look around me, that is exactly what is happening. And therefore it is this, this uh, bringing it to the forefront of your mind and actually working with it playing with yeah. it, massaging it and say, actually, is that is that the belief system that right now tells you that information? Is that actually true? Yeah. Where does that information come from? And you might find it's a heap of bullshit. You might actually it find is. it's crap. Or it might be catastrophizing that you think, oh, my God, oh, I need to be very careful because like your friend you've just alluded to um, comes up with 15 scenarios, which then causes her to say, no, uh, I can't possibly invest in that relationship or invest literally right. money into a business. No, 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 no. We need to play that safe. And yeah, there's the sabotage. Yeah. yeah. That's a, well, and you you ask about like the tools. What do you do when mm. you know you're looking at yourself in the mirror? Mm. There are times. I mean, really, uh, what are the odds? This girl from Mexico that was completely alone at times walked, you know, with shoes on, you know, holes in her shoes, and then now is selling multi million dollar properties mm. in Manhattan Beach by the beach, the uh, very beautiful affluent area. And it, it sometimes is scary coming up with these people that have three, five, ten million dollar properties. <laughs> what do I do? I do the big girl just stand up tall, superwoman, mm. I can do it, and just you just gotta get it done. Mm. And there's no questioning, and you just walk in there, and that's another one of my tools. Sometimes you just gotta I don't know if there's that saying I don't like it, but it's it's there fake it till you make it mm. you just gotta mm. fake it and just go for it mm. it's just mm. jump mm. and then get it done yep. but it, it really actually is for me you actually i have to stand up tall put my shoulders back breathe and get in like it, it mm. has to be a body transformation mm. Mm. absolutely and that yeah. is that is we started this interview with me saying, "Hey, I need ten seconds to put my my interview yeah. ahead on." That's exactly that. You actually go, "Okay, right now yeah. I will do that. I will be," and it goes subconscious nowadays with me. There's nothing more going through my head. I'm just breathing, and with that breathing out, yeah. I relax, and I can switch that. I can click that switch, uh, and it is. Yeah a powerful thing. And you need to practice that. Um, for me yeah. as an anesthetist, I walk into a room, I need to gain that trust of that patient within the yeah. first 10 seconds, 15 seconds. And you learn skills to portray who you really are. And by showing your your authenticity and your, your, mm. your appreciation of yourself, uh, people right. pick that up. And I think that is something that you equally show. Uh, because most people, they can look through a phony. Uh, they immediately pick that up within a short period of time mm -hmm. that there is no way that they, however beautiful this house is, because you are there, they will not buy it. If you were a phony, right. if you were a fake, uh, things like that. So whilst, you, whilst I like the way you're saying it, fake it till you make it, it is, I would probably re- reword it how would practice, you do it because yeah i don't really practice. like it it's no no that's right make it. it's yeah. practice practice being your best self something like yeah. that that's yeah. i think how i look at myself practice the skill you need to make it right now happen might right. that be saving a life in my case literally on the theater table i hope i've practiced right. enough to make that happen but equally right. practice saving your relationship Practice right. listening to what the other person actually is saying. Even if it comes out in anger, don't respond to the anger. Respond yeah. actually, what are you saying? What are you really saying? Are you saying you're tired, hungry, the last thing you want to do is cook now? Shall we go out? Mm -hmm. shall we, shall I, or shall I get a takeaway for you? Why don't you sit down? I'll put a fire on for you and you're going to yeah. have a nice relax. How about that? And don't tell me about your day. And Surprise, surprise, you don't end in the third world war with your partner because you have learned how to actually listen. And that's a skill. 
So there was not me faking it. Yes, darling. Yeah. Please, uh, whilst you're yeah. thinking about something else. No, that is me actually yeah. practicing to keep my mouth shut and actually listen to her. And one mouth, two ears. You should use them in the same ratio. So therefore, and, but that is something I need to learn. And I do need to remind myself. And I think that's that's what I invite you all out there. And I guess that's what you are, what you are saying. I've just rephrased it. Uh, it is, yeah. you need to work on yourself. You need to. We, it constantly. starts uh, inside out. It always starts with self. Whatever it is, it's not with a pill. It's not with a quick little gimmick. It's like it's, it's got to get to the heart, to the gut. And um and it's not scary. Like it's really empowering. It may be scary, I guess, because we get we're so used to habits, right? And that means changing a habit mm. is to think differently, do a different mm. practice, go to a different person to tell you mm. about your. Yeah, it's just some people are scared about it. Yeah, but you can either choose to be scared or you can choose to just do that little step take the tiny teensy yeah. weensy step uh, just a little micro habit if you want to get healthy well then maybe don't just sign up for a marathon but actually yeah. just say you know what tomorrow right. when i go to work i parked the car in a car park furthest away from yeah where i work yeah. so that's 100 meters that you have right. walked that you wouldn't have walked otherwise you know for sure T- teensy weensy habit yeah you have another not- thing i yeah. One of the things I do on a normal basis um, is, drive. you know, we get in our habits of driving to our house or our mm-hmm. work. We have like our shop where we go shopping, where our house, our work, very habitual stuff. And we drive there and then we realize how do we get here? Because it's such a habit. We like, we didn't even see what was around us. We just kind of thought, and it's like, we just move. And it's actually, I try to take different routes <laughs> learn a different street and kind of get lost but not really oh my yeah. god look at i didn't know that house was there or this street yeah. and, there, and it's still the same route it's just uh-huh. a different yeah. sort of you know section yeah. or look at things differently just That's right. oh my god that house has been there forever look at those beautiful flowers there uh-huh. i didn't uh-huh. realize how their garden had blossomed like just kind of go deeper yeah. And get yeah. away from all the busyness in our head. <laughs> yeah. You're so right. You're so right. Uh, and another guest has described it to me as if you put your trousers on and you always put your right leg in first, why don't you put the left leg in yeah. next time yeah. and actually see how that feels? Or yeah. yeah, just do things a little bit different. And you suddenly think, huh. And suddenly you live in the moment because you actually have to focus on your, on your leg there that goes into the trousers and, and not and you feel empowered <laughs> because now you're seeing something different you're seeing the same thing differently mm. you didn't really do anything different but you're seeing doing different because you're doing it in a different version of it that's right something you know is that, that how in- easy to grow how easy is it to to get out of yourself and suddenly become this new person and for that yeah. Guys, yeah. I congratulate you for that. You, you, the sheer fact that you listened to that interview now all the way to the end, he, uh, hopefully, hopefully you got the message there. It is it is so cool to try different things. It is so cool to change your story. And you have got the ability. You, you, the past does not equal the future. You It does not re- define you. Exactly. So beautiful. God, show us your book. Show us your book, Karina. Oh my gosh. This, yeah. <laughs> no, oh my gosh. we've talked about I it. Fell on the frown. <laughs> there you go. Choosing there magic. The okay. There in the back of the book, I wrote, um, I don't know why I wrote this, but it turned out to be a great uh course that I created. Uh, but it's called Stuff I Learned. And this really basic stuff. And it, I had to learn them because I didn't have anybody to raise me. They're very simple things like wake up with gratitude every day. Mm. Um, victim no more. Like don't play a victim if you can. Yeah. Victimhood, being a victim is like giving yourself away for free, right? Like you're just kind of be nice to everybody. Everybody's important. Mm. We forget when we go to the grocery store or the gas station, like mm. we're just in a hurry and are doing our stuff. And we forget there are people 
doing services for us mm. that we wouldn't, what would we do without them, right? What would we do without the grocery person? Like just give them a little compliment, call them by their name. It just changes their life. Mm. Um, and it puts a smile on your face because oh their, God, smile, yeah. their smile is yeah. contagious when they suddenly yeah. look up and say, Oh, thank you, or oh. something like that. And it's just they feel yeah. acknowledged. Correct. Yeah. It's gorgeous. <laughs> we all want to feel acknowledged. And, oh, exactly. and yes. Oh. Karina, yeah. it's beautiful, beautiful. Uh, if so people fun. want to if people want to know more about you, if people want to to chase you up a little bit more, either as a real estate agent or indeed at as an author bringer of hope, uh, changer of, or deliverer of magic, show them how to choose magic. How can they do that? How can they get hold of you? Well, on the real estate end for Los Angeles, KarinaPacific.com, K-A-R-I-N-A, Pacific like the ocean, the true story.com. And um, for the book, uh, choosingmagic.com and it's, uh, both have their own Instagrams and their own Facebooks Choosing Magic and uh, on choosingmagic.com they can sort of sign up in a, for a freebie of a little mini version of the course which is the things that I've learned which is an insert of the, of the book mm -hmm. you can get that for free via email mm -hmm. uh, and hopefully it inspires you oh, yeah I mean, I mean we, we are, we're all here to inspire each other you're doing it every day by doing this and changing your story indeed and there is no no nothing stopping me nothing holding me back yes. because every, every new guest will is is inspiring me or is is showing me a different aspect of something that i had not thought about it so yeah. for me i actually got yeah now 176 177 hours of therapy Thank you very much to you, Karina, as one of my teachers. <laughs> and I love it. I love it. It is. It's just, yeah, you, 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 know, you make me think. And this is beautiful. For that, I am uh, very, very grateful to you. And guys, if you oh, didn't get, if you can't, you. if you didn't hear it all, just look down there in the description of the video or of the podcast, because you've got all the details of Karina down there. You can easily click from there and and see the work that she has been doing and maybe engage with her further as absolutely you know what have you got to lose eh, no i don't I, I can't think of anything either nada, nada. <laughs> <laughs> here you go karina it was such a great time with you thank oh you God, so thank much you so for much. coming it, onto my it show it was so fun and thank you for doing this this redo redo over again rescheduling mm -hmm. we got it done oh. thank you for the work you do I'm so pleased that we did. And you guys so out fun. there, look after yourself. You have got one life to live. Now the past does not equal the future. You have got all the power to change your life. You just need to take yes. little finite steps in the right direction. You can do it. Do not give up. Stay strong and look after yourself. Yes. Bye. <laughs> Bye.